What's up, everybody? Yes. Good evening. Uh, rainy. Yeah, rainy, but we were just talking, like, should not be cut short by <laughs> a tornado warning or a severe thunderstorm. It's just a slow rain. Yeah. Now, earlier today, it, it, it looked like we could have, I mean, we did have a, I don't know that we were under a warning, but it was a pretty nasty line. What was up with the uh, siren at like 10 o'clock? Oh, I never, I was unaware. <clears> yeah, this they, morning. Yeah, they had the siren going on, and I was like, hmm. heck, and I would have, I was kind of out and about all day. Um, but uh, I'm not sure. Well, you sure. probably weren't awake yet then at 10 o'clock in the morning. When <laughs> On your day off, you sleep to about 12. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we don't have anything to do. <laughs> uh, but. No, yeah, today was one of those where I was, I was kind of, I felt a lot of pressure to get stuff done because I knew that weather was going to move in this afternoon. Thankfully, it held off to what about three, three thirty or so. Yeah, it hit about three. I had to run to, I was in Ripley. I was leaving Tennessee Tractor at about three o'clock. It was starting to rain. That wind this morning, I guess before that front moved through, was ridiculous. Yeah, I was on the track hoe. Um, and yeah, it was blowing crap everywhere because I had, you know, it warmed up. So I had the door open on the traco, and it was blowing blowing crap all in on me in the traco. On your deer? On the deer. The deer, it's running like a deer. Finally, man. Yesterday, yesterday, dad, well, let me back up. So two days ago, I, you know, I got the fuel problem fixed. <clears throat> so I got out there and was running it. I ran in for about 15 minutes and saw a shitload of hydraulic oil on it. And I was like, my gosh, man. I, so I, I walked it back over to the truck and I, I was looking around trying to find out where the leak is. I'm up underneath it. I've pulled a plate off. Oil's dripping all over me. It's like dripping on my face. And that's just pissing me off even more. And I mean, I, I'm like to the point, I'm like, I mean, I actually. This is funny. I ought to not tell this on myself, but like I, I had a temper tantrum in the track hoe. So, you know, you can't do anything to a track hoe. Like it's a big, heavy machine. Like, you know, you could kick something. You ain't going to do anything on a track hoe. And I was laughing. I was telling dad them about it. I said, if somebody had been watching, they'd have got a, they'd been wondering what I was doing. Cause I walked it towards the truck and I just, I just took the bucket and just went, boom 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 i just slammed it down on the ground like three times i mean i'm having to work the hydraulics i'm having like a, a hydraulic temper tantrum with the track hoe i mean it's not hurting anything because it's not like i'm go it ain't like going fast enough to damage it but i'm just going boom 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 with the, <laughs> the boom i'm just like damn it you piece of shit the whole time yeah you need to get that thing running good and get rid of it <laughs> dude that's what i well i got back and dad was like you've been you've been running the track up and i said no i ain't been running it it's a piece of shit and he's like what's wrong with it and i said now it's got damn old just running everywhere and so a few more expletives uh, added in there and my frustration he was like tomorrow we'll go with you and we'll help you find the leak so yeah yesterday we went out there and oh it was it was naturally so in the track hoe, it's got like a, uh, have you ever seen the column that the hoses all run into? Yeah. So this one has that column, you know, there's hoses on this side that you can, you can get to pretty easy. I changed an O-ring on one of them thinking maybe that was the one it wasn't. And of course, all of the easy access ones, no, we like uh, Brock had a mirror down there and he found it and it was on the back side of the block and it's up against a wall has four oh. huge Allen heads. That's why I've got a, I don't ever wear band-aids, but I got a band-aid on because I kind of got a little nasty little wound right there where. Busted knuckle. No, I actually pressed so hard with the wrench that the, I had the boxed in, like the, I had the closed in on, I was having to cheat with some leverage. So I had the little just short Allen screw or Allen wrench, you know, the little L-shaped yeah. Allen wrench. And it was a big one. And I had it in there because I could get it in there. And then I was having to put a wrench on the Allen wrench to try Jeez. to get some leverage. Yeah. And I was having to push so hard. They were so tight. And I didn't have gloves on at first. And I was pushing so hard that it, like, actually pushed the wrench head into my hand a little bit. Like, I I got off of there and 
man, my hand was bleeding. I was like, dang. And Brock was like, man, you got a pretty good one there. He said, you hit it on something. I was like, I literally pressed the wrench into my hand, trying to break this thing loose and, uh, got three of the bolts out. And then the very last one started trying to strip out. Uh And so we had to take off the whole plate. We had to take about 12 bolts out and pull the whole plate off literally so we could lay it over enough to get in there. I got it changed and that that fixed it. But yeah, I was like, if this doesn't do it, I mean, I told the guy that's helping me on the other farm, I said, if you see a big cloud of black smoke, just pretend that you never saw it. Like, I was like, dude, this thing is going to be the death of me, but knock on wood. I ran it for a couple hours today. Everything looked good. Um, cause I had to go to Ripley and, and yeah, it was getting pretty rough outside, but yeah, it was, it did all right today, but damn man. Yeah. I'm, if I have another problem out of that thing, yeah. I'm going to probably get rid of it. Bad thing is it's just little, it's little like nitpicky crap like that. Yeah. That's doing it. I mean, because the machine I can tell has not been abused. Like it's tight. Like it, it, the there's not a lot of slack and everything. Like it should be a good machine. Like it's yeah. just little crap like that that is about to drive yeah. me insane. That's I, I don't have anything that major, but a little tiny little piece. It's like a thirty dollar part. It should be like a twelve dollar part. Yeah. Um, in the joystick for my loader on my tractor broke um and so i can't use the front end loader oh man like, well will it not move at all well i can it, i can't go up or down with it right now just and like i could probably really really jerry rig something <laughs> but uh it, and it broke and, and dad's been trying to drill out and actually i didn't even see him today and, and i was like i could probably limp it along but of course our local dealer didn't have one in stock which i didn't expect them to um they don't ever have anything, but uh, so I had to order one, and it's it's gonna take it like a week to get here. Dang, so yeah, I was well, that ain't much help for you. No, I'm I'm having which you I, haven't used the back loader. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm just using a three point hitch, and well, a, you might and, as well have the old ninety six hundred back out I, there. I was videoing today, and I said the exact thing. It's like <laughs> reminds, but my pro, my real problem is the way I've got the hay stacked in the barn. You need it. I almost like. Yeah, because even my bottom row, I've got them turned up on their end, so I was trying to maximize how much hay I can stack in there. So it's hard for me to even get to them with the tractor. But, I mean, I'm, I managed. Yeah. And, and that's what I figured. It's like I'm probably going to have to feed like that again this weekend because I don't think those parts will be here till next week or that, that one little bitty part. Where is uh, Craig? Uh, I, won't, I guess I'll try to not say his last name uh for privacy sake oh um, he, he which went, one is he at i believe he's in dyersburg okay i i and didn't see, i didn't try them because i was like I'm, I'm not driving that far um which they've got another oh one. man you're spoiled man come on well you're right but it's <laughs> my other thing is like i don't like i can get by without it yeah you know and 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 truth be known like today i probably had time i could have but I didn't know that I was going to, and and oh yeah, yeah. you're I, like it's not quite a necessity. You're like the guy. You're. Did you remember the video of the dude uh, I had put on Instagram? I'm sure I sent it to you, where it's like the terrible person singing "Dream On," and the car's like alignment is so bad out that it's like <laughs> oh, yeah. driving at an angle. That's Bobby Lee. He's like, ah, it still gets me from point A to point B. You well, know? It, it like <laughs> like if the tractor would not like would not have been operable. I would have have figured out something. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I would have, would have made that drive, or or heck, I would have maybe even gotten somebody to go do it for me. Did you like, hear it break? Or are you yeah, just yeah, using it, was, it? It was in the joystick. Yeah, and all it is is just a piece. It's not even actually connected to the hydraulics, but it just holds the joystick in place. Yeah, and so, but it's still it's worthless without it. Like, oh yeah, I was. I guess it was Monday. I was home on lunch, and I was I was needing to put out a roll of hay, and it just joystick you know supposed to just went over just limp and i was like what the hell you know, for, for a second i was like of course naturally it, like i said i was on lunch so i was like I, i've got like 15 minutes to get this done but, but did luckily, you have a bail on it no i i it, it kind of worked out at a good time as far as that was concerned I, yeah like right in the middle of putting a bail out 
Um, I think I was pretty much done with it. I was putting it back in the barn, but I needed it like the next day. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, hey. I had a, I had a, I was still considered a minor breakdown, although I may have an update on that next week. So I'm Trade. pretty sure. I'm pretty sure all I gotta do is fix. Put that on. Oh, record. I was gonna say you. You ever have you looked at any more po- um, possible I've trades? Been, I've been playing around. There was one that I. I think I mentioned to you. It was a John Deere that I found. I was like, man, that seems like a pretty good price. Yeah. Like two days later, I went to look at it again, and it must have sold because it's. I was like, well, it might have really actually been a good price, but yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm hesitant right now. I feel like, I mean, everything's so high, and I don't know. I. You already see like housing prices are coming way down and things like that. I'm like maybe some of these equipment prices. Probably wishful thinking, but like ah maybe now it's not the best time to be yeah to trade in. Um, well that's what I went today. Signed all the stuff on my tractor and looked at it. The, the fifty it's a fifty ninety e. It looks just like this fifty one hundred out here, but um and it looks good. It's got a hundred hours on it, which is essentially brand new. Yes, <clears throat> and um. It's all been through John Deere. It was like their little, they would take it to shows yeah, um, and use it. But because uh, it's, man, it's so much stuff like on them, different models. Like this is a 5100M out here. That's a 5090E, but it actually has an extra remote on it from this one. Like this tractor out here has, it has two sets of remotes. The tractor I'm getting has three um even the transmission is different, um, but it was pretty sharp. I got out there and looked at it to, uh, today. It had my tiller. I did get a tiller as well. Had the tiller on the back of it, my bucket. He threw in a set of forklifts, forks for me. Um, I asked about a bush hog because I was like, man, the last thing I need to kind of complete this is a bush hog. I said, I want a, a bush hog because I'm going to need it. Actually, on the farm I'm working on. And sorry, y'all might can hear the rain a little bit. Um, but I was like, I need a bush hog. My God, man, you talk about expensive equipment. Yeah. I need to ask you what y'all paid. I can ask you off air if you don't want to say, but uh, for <laughs> the ones y'all got. Yeah, I imagine they're higher now because we bought those at a good time before everything got stupid. And uh, yeah, mine wasn't green. So if they were, I don't even care. To you. Yeah. He priced green and then a woods. Um, he had some. Well, that's what uh, mine's a woods. What size? Uh, 15 foot. All right. Well, the 15 foot was $24,000. Yeah. Significantly more than I paid. Um, the, I wonder if it had, cause there are different little models and options, but uh, mine was brand new. I, I think I want to say we was like right at 15 or 16,000. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, the, the 12 footer was more than that. The 12 foot was like 16 or 17,000. I would imagine the one we bought, just with the way everything got stupid, like might have been like nineteen or twenty now, but it shouldn't have been that much. Yeah, I don't no. know. That one may have like some more options, which, which I, I really don't, I really don't know what what else we would. Because y'all like some of them are just lighter duty. Yeah, and like don't have as many, um, you know, like wheels on the back and you know, stuff like that. But but we bought the better ones, so I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say the like I I think I saw y'all's. When they delivered them, yeah, that would be fine. Like I'm not, yeah. I just need a good, good one to use, and and that's what. But I was like, and he told me like, man, when he got to figuring it up, he said, man, these things are high, and I said, wow, man, yeah. I said, I don't want to spend that much. I was wanting to spend like I was like, I want to, I'd like a used one. I said, you know, if I could find yeah. one for like ten, yeah, I, it's one of those things. I wouldn't want one that's been heavily used. No, and that's what he said. He was like, "Man, you know, it's hard because he said sometimes the used ones they have been abused." And I said, yeah. "Oh yeah, bush hog yeah. gets it takes some punishment. Yeah, hitting stumps and whatever else. Yeah, um, yeah. But well, you can give us an update from the cardiologist. I will. Yeah, yeah. Not, You're here. So I'm that. here. Um, yeah, I did survive uh, and up until this point. No, I went, uh, when did I go? What is today? I went yesterday. Okay. Um, yeah, I went yesterday and, uh, and they checked me out, took me back there. I had to wear a mask. Yeah. I was kind of annoyed, uh, right yeah. there because I got there and there was a sign on the door that said mask still required. It was like, even, I think it was written that way. Like we still require masks. Yeah. 
And uh, but I didn't put a mask. I don't even have a mask anymore. I don't keep any in the truck. So I went in, did not put a mask on. Didn't even. They never said a word about it. Filled out what I had to fill out. They called me back, and I'm back there, and they're weighing me and checking blood pressure and all that. And the woman's like, "Did they give you a mask up front?" And I said, "No." She goes, "Well, you got to wear a mask." And so she pulled out a box and made me put a mask on. Yeah. Um. But uh, blood pressure was. I'm not that bad when they checked it. Then I got back in the room. It was even lower, and, and like, they did an EKG on me, did that, checked me out, and they were like, that looks good. Doctor came in there, and he asked me some questions, kind of went over some stuff, and then they did some blood work, your your analysis? Yeah. Urine. Your is analysis. it a urinalysis? Is it one word? Yeah, urinalysis. Urinalysis. Not urine analysis. All right, yeah. that's what I wondered. I was like, yeah, am I saying word. this wrong? All right. No, you so, get it right. Urinalysis. So they did that, and that's what they called me today. Um, all blood, all my labs were good. Um, and yeah, they were like, man, he kind of explained. He said, man, your blood pressure, one, he was like, your anxiety is the cause of your you're spiking blood pressure at times. He was like, that's because he was like, your heart is fine. He was like, it's definitely your anxiety. Um, but he said, uh, he said, when they say 120 over 80, he said, man, that's like perfectly calm. He said, that's like if you were to go sit down for 10 minutes and you are relaxed and you check your blood pressure, it should be around 120 over 80. He said, if you're up moving around doing stuff and then you go sit down and check your blood pressure, like, immediately he said it's not uncommon for it to be 150 over something he said you know you don't you shouldn't like be doing something immediately check and expect it to be 120 over 80 right so he was like that doesn't mean you have high blood pressure he was like if you start checking it when you're completely calm and it's 150 over something he was like then we'll have to do something yeah but i did appreciate you know he's sometimes doctors are weird about exercise like They're like, they'll recommend low intensity workouts and that's about it. And so I asked him, I said, well, man, I said, I've got the stuff to work out. I like to stay active. I said, what about like some, some cardio and weightlifting? And he goes, high intensity aerobic exercises paired with heavy resistance training would be great for your heart. And I was like, my man, there we go. So (laughs) Can, can you keep drinking coffee? They told, they did tell me that I might want to cut back on coffee a little bit because they were like, if you're having a lot of anxiety, they're like, the caffeine's probably triggering some of your anxiety. So they were like, you may want to cut back, which I've actually done, but I just, I drink eight ounces of regular and then I just brew decaf and I drink, drink a cup of decaf Uh, because I just love, I mean, I just love the taste of coffee. Oh yeah. Well, it's just, it's just a habit. It is. I mean, it's like a. It's a it's a pleasure in the morning. I think I've drank somewhere. I, I've drank between ten and twelve cups. I'd say most days. Yeah, I would be, <laughs> I would be insane. Like they would have to have me. Like there'd be police coming with tasers and Maybe stuff. Maybe eight to ten. I don't know. I'm pretty sure our coffee maker only goes up to ten cups. But we, I, of course, make a full pot first thing, and then <laughs> uh, and then I usually make, and like sometimes like on Sundays when I'm around the house more and like and then i drink coffee like as we're driving to church still that's like 11 a.m you know I'd, heck I, I make two full pots and i drink three quarters of what gets drank man you know, nah, my life. you would i would be i would seriously be a maniac like i i don't know what i'd do like i'd be i'd be crazy i'd be like forrest gump i would run forever like if i if I drank that well, much. well i told you tonight when i texted you about an hour before i came over here and you said yeah we're doing it tonight. And I started getting sleepy. I almost made some coffee tonight. <laughs> I've only ever drank coffee at night one time, and I slept real shitty, so I didn't do it again. I do it like if we, I think I probably said this on here. Like if we go out to eat, like in Memphis. Yeah, and you know, I got like a forty-five minute drive home. Like when they, you know, are like, "Hey, can we get you anything for dessert?" Like, "Hey, I'll take a cup of coffee, and and if you can make it to go, that'd be even better." Because <laughs> um, most most nice restaurants actually make really good coffee. Too, yeah. So. Yeah. But, well, well, good, good. Yeah, so, I don't plan on dying anytime soon. So, so any any listeners or viewers that were you know, wanting to send in get well cards, Logan will still take them. I appreciate them. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, but I'm I'm even I'm having a glass of whiskey. I told Marcy I was like, well, I got in. I said, all right, I guess I can start eating real shitty and drink a hell of a lot more because my I said I'm like damn near a perfect specimen. When I- <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she was just like, good gosh. So yeah, now I'll go back for like a follow up in like a year, and I'll be like, damn, your shit's all messed up, man. What have you been doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Well, good deal. Um, yeah. Glad to hear that. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm. I'm. That was a a relief. Uh, the anxiety thing. Hey, at least I know I ain't having a heart attack. Um, you had a few things, but I was trying to think. There was one thing I was gonna. Oh. No, I I told you I had a rant. <clears throat> you did, you did. Man, have you have you paid your property taxes yet? Uh, that falls in my secretary's category. <laughs> <laughs> she was at home in bed when I left. I think for most like, it because isn't a lot of times it's they're worked into your uh, like into your mortgage, aren't they? A lot of times, or your I don't know. I always have to pay them. Shit, I don't know. I I know embarrassingly little. My wife has the business degree. She handles a whole lot. Oh of man, it. I, my wish. I, now, I, yeah, property taxes make maybe as little sense. Uh, uh, that was one of those things where I can understand. And I mean, I, I don't need to be making excuses for a tax, but like at some point in time, there was a crisis somewhere, and they're like, okay, we'll just like one time tax everybody's property. But like, no, th- there is absolutely zero reason why you should buy something and then for, forever for, until the end of time have to pay tax on like well and of course i don't want to give the government or anybody any ideas but like why why just own your home and your and your your land like your real estate like why we, we what's keeping, our shoes yeah what, what's to keep them coming <laughs> in your closet saying well by golly all these clothes you've got are worth a lot of money yeah you, 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 and that's property yeah you're gonna like who's to say we won't get there Oh, you're right. So that's why I hesitate to even say it. But yeah. It's just like, ah. Yeah, the FBI agents that are listening to us are probably like, yeah, we got to tell tell the Uncle Joe about that one. Yeah, yeah. If he ever makes it back home. Yeah. Well, that uh, that's what pisses me off more so than anything. Like, obviously, taxes. Taxes. Here on Talk Dirt to Me, we just hate taxes. We think it's a bunch of bullshit, and uh, we don't cut much corners about that. We told them we'd have an idea of shirts. We almost need one that's like anti-taxation for Talk Dirt to me. Because remember, we're running out of time. We we said we would have some apparel. I thought about that today, too. I was like, you know, he said by the end of the month. Yeah, we so, got, we got and it's leap year this year, the 28th. We got a 28th of February. Yeah, but no, it's not a leap year. So is on a leap year there is no 28th? Is that right? Uh, well, on a, on, a, on a leap year, we have... There's 29 days. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Gotcha. So All right. maybe next year. I know it's an even year whenever we go to the 29th. Every fourth year, you know, we add an extra day. But yeah. I don't know if that's next year. Pull out my fancy count. Yes, next year is a leap year. Oh, man. All right. Well, then we only, we have like, it's already late in the day here. So we really only have about five days yeah. to come up with something. Yeah. So, but... It, it just pisses me off because I'm like, all right, Biden is back in Ukraine, or he's in Ukraine, and I, what did he take, $500 million or $500 billion? He took, like, a shitload of money with him. Yeah, well, and then they, like, guarantee that we're, like, going to pay their pensions and all this, like, what? Yeah, that, why, why are we doing this? I don't understand. I, man, and, and I definitely put my tin full hat on, and... I won't, you know, it's where I go. Like, it's it's just all a money laundering thing. Like, it, it it's not even about, like, defeating Russia. Um, I think it's really just a way that they're putting money back in their buddies' pockets and their own pockets. Yeah. Um, so, somebody, and again, I don't know if he was legit or not, but I saw it was pointing out that the amount of money that we have, just that we have given to the Ukraine is equivalent to, like, 90% of Russia's entire military budget it's like literally these like these numbers don't make sense like yeah. it can't like you're telling me that ukraine has taken pretty much as much money from us as russia russia has in their entire defense and again i, I can't 
you know, claim this is absolute fact. It wouldn't but, shock me. But this, and his whole point was like, no, he's like, there's no way all that money is being, you know, used just in this fight. And, and I'm sure war, war ain't cheap. I'm not trying to say that, but yeah. So it, I don't know. But it ain't even our fight. Like that's what's like so frustrating. Well, to and me. I can even go so far as say, but we have an interest in in Russia not getting out of line yeah like, yeah if we can keep the fight over there yeah keep them from just going out of control and it okay but you're right yeah it ain't really our fight yeah um you know us just sending them blank check after blank check i mean hell it's like i've always said like with the immigration thing and everything once we've got everything completely in order here Okay, and then if we've got extra money, yeah, let's. But hell, we're already so deep in debt we can't see straight. Oh yeah, it's like well, we've like, got we've got so many problems here in the country that, that we could put money into. Yeah, you know that 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 need funding. But like, no, look, rather than let's do that, let's send just boatloads of cash overseas. Yeah, um, and like Ohio thing, too. I'm looking at Ohio. Yeah, yeah, that that disaster and all these things, and well, like the whole like the immigrants coming in. Like, look, I. I feel for a lot of those people like, yeah, I would love them to get here and have a better way of life. Um, but you know, we've got a lot of homeless people here and people, you know, living in, in bad conditions, going hungry that, you know, are, are already American citizens. Let's, yeah. I, I believe in taking care of them. And then when you've got extra, you know, take care of your own before well, you, you <clears> reach <throat> out elsewhere. So. That's what I told Marcy. We were talking about tonight. I was telling her cause I got, I got mad talking about taxes and all that tonight. I told her, I said, I was like, that's one of my frustrations. When, when Democrats are in office, America is literally last. You know, we come last, like the actual American people and the country itself. It's like, that's like the last thing on their thing. It's like, all right, let's help Ukraine. Let's do this. Let's do that. And then that is one thing I liked, you know, look, Trump, far from perfect but when he was in there one of his things was essentially america first right and like dude i'm like look well and a lot of that's changed like with the democrats you know you you go back really before you and i were alive especially you know 40 50 years ago the democrats were the the party of the blue collar the working class you know yeah um yeah the republicans were the rich guys yeah and and now it's it's gotten where now like they've They've gone so far off the deep end. A lot of what they do is anti-working class, you know. And, yeah. And, and, and yet yeah, tax the hell out of everybody. And it's just like, oh, my God. You know. um, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. Well, that's that's me. I hadn't paid property taxes. Um, yeah, I just I don't want to. If I can find a way to not, I'm just not going to. But it's yeah. not looking too good for me. You know, look into the whole, like, just – declare yourself a sovereign citizen <laughs> i told you i worked with one of those one time didn't i i mean but it doesn't work right you can't just like say yeah i'm a sovereign uh, you know i'm not I'm, well, not gonna, I'm not gonna collect any benefits or anything but there's a whole gonna... process to it oh so there's actually a legal there's a there is a guy i did i not tell you about the dude i worked with i I've, i think i've heard you like mention it but i don't know like well, he was. Like, I assume you eventually go to jail for. <laughs> you know, I would always have thought that, but like, apparently, there's like a guy that's like the leader, not the not the leader. He's like the father of the sovereign citizens, essentially, because this dude that I worked with, I'm not gonna mention his name because he was. I liked him. He was a good guy. Oh no, I think you'd be. A, <laughs> he was. Yeah, you know, he was. I'd love to pick the brain. Yeah. <laughs> well he was different he was different but well, like think, yeah you got to be a little different yeah to, to be willing to go through with it well he would kind of like get to know you because i had a guy one time that was like that also worked with him we worked all worked together and he was like man has he tried to get you to watch that weird weird shit on youtube and i'm like no what is it and he's like some sovereign citizen shit or something <laughs> i don't know he's like a youtube series he tries to get you to watch and i'm like no i ain't what he hadn't sent them to me and so we were talking one day, and yeah, it's apparently like the dude that's kind of like, like I said, basically the father of it. He's got like a whole YouTube series where he goes step by step on how you do it. Ultimate goal, because the dude that I worked with was like, he was like, at some point in my life, I will not have a social security number. He was like, my social security number will be gone. 
he said, I will never buy tags again. Y'all would be right in line there. He was like, don't buy. I think he already didn't buy tags. He was like, I won't be buying tags anymore. Um, And I'm pretty sure he might have. I don't remember if he was already, but his plan was to not own a home and just squat. Um, Like he was going like full bore. (laughs) Like he was going to be like a squatter. But uh, he was a he was going the route of sovereign citizen. But no, there's a there is a guy that has a YouTube series. It's like a very large page, if I remember right, and he tells you the the process. It's like a slow process. You essentially have to. I think you more or less vanish over time. Like that's the yeah. plan, man. You know, like if you get pulled, like you don't even you don't have driver's license anymore. But I mean, and again, as much as I think, like, yeah, that that makes sense that you, we shouldn't have to do all those things. But how do you get away with that? Like, if you get pulled over. I mean, that's whenever they're crazy and shoot at them. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I, I think I've seen how this ends. Yeah. yeah. Where was that? Like West Memphis, where they had the sovereign citizens shootout. The oh, game well, warden ran over. Well, I remember that, but I didn't remember those were were sovereign citizens. Oh yeah, it was a dad and a son. They were sovereign yeah. citizens. Yeah. Well, and you know. I don't want to sound like a total anti-government nut job, but you know, <laughs> you hear that story and like the whole narrative on the news is, uh, you know, the law enforcement, they're all heroes. These pieces of shit that were, you know, you know, murderous and all this. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Maybe there's another side of the story we hadn't heard here, you know, and, uh, maybe they just wanted to be left alone. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I don't remember. I just remember them saying they were, they were sovereign citizen. Because, you know, we only got that side of the story, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, and again, we don't need to turn this into a total anti-government <laughs> rant episode. But, you know, I'm old enough to remember when uh, <coughs> the Branch Davidians. Um, Waco, Ruby Texas, Ridge and all that. I don't remember Ruby Ridge, but I remember Waco. Like, yeah. I remember, like. Because you were a part of the Branch Davidians. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Bobby Lee was in Waco. I grew, I grew up there. Yeah. <laughs> but, um. Well, I remember, like, I would have been, like, in elementary school. I can look it up real quick when that David was. David Koresh. Yeah. But I remember it was the Wacko and Waco, like, and that was the narrative. Yeah. And, like, now, you know, I've as an adult, you know, and, and kind of an anti-government adult, and, like, I've watched <laughs> the documentaries and read more about it, and I'm like, you know what, they were some weirdos, but they really did just want to be left alone. Did you watch the one with Taylor? And, and they were totally, yeah, yeah. Uh, Man, that was a good, that was yeah, good. like, they were... They weren't doing anything. I mean, the whole, that whole deal, the fact that the ATF still exists just blows my mind. Because, I mean, they they don't even deny that, like, no, they were just going to make an example out of them. They're they were about to have all their funding pulled by Congress. Yeah. Like, it was like Operation Showtime. Like, it was yeah, all yeah. made for TV so that they could get it all on camera yeah. and pop the tape in and show Congress, see how important we are. Yeah. You can't take away our funding. Yeah. Um, well, it was crazy, too, because, you know, they did the psyops on them, and they played the, like, you know, they wouldn't let them sleep. They were playing the, like, oh, super yeah, loud yeah. stuff all yeah. night. Yeah, no, that, for people what, listening. That was 93, so yeah, when it all came, ended. Yeah, um, yeah, I was so two. I, I remember it vividly. <laughs> I'd have been 10, so I, but I do, but the whole, my whole point was, the whole narrative was, like. Against them, yeah. Yeah, like, everything from the media was, which, of course, we were all. We weren't getting the Branch Davidian side of things, not then. Yeah. Um, you were only getting what the FBI and the ATF, whoever was giving you. So anyway. The show did a really good job. I I, I encourage you to check it was out pretty Waco. Fair. Like it didn't yeah. um what what was it was Waco, um Madman or Messiah, is that what they called that one? That the one that I watched was just called Waco. Okay, well I watched another one. Oh yeah, yeah. That one was more of just a based on true story tv show yeah you're right i watched another one that was like a just a documentary actually interviewed real people yeah yeah yeah. i've watched several of them but it actually interviewed some of the people that were there oh really yeah um and it was like i don't remember the title but it was like madman or messiah yeah you know? uh, um, look i mean and again the dude was he was using the claiming to be messiah and he was cracking the women i mean he was doing some weird oh, stuff yeah it was, but he wasn't it wasn't a condemnable to death sentence to where well, they killed nobody everyone was, nobody was there against their will yeah um i think probably the worst thing they could have got him on was some of the girls may have been underage yeah um and like which 
and again, not this makes it any better. It was all super weird, but like even their parents, because I mean, he really had them brainwashed that like yeah. he was the second coming of Christ or whatever. But um, well, then you know they did, they got the series, the video or movie on Ruby Ridge, but it got pulled. See, I never got to that, see that it. one. Fascinates me. I, I've read a book or two on it, um, but yeah, because um, because they were. They were some. They were far out there. Yeah. Um, like they. They were definitely not just like normal people. You or I would have hung out with, but that dude really did. I mean, he just wanted to be left alone. Yeah. And uh, and that whole deal, like he was totally set up, and like coerced into. I don't remember if he bought or sold a sawed-off shotgun from, from like a an undercover agent, but they totally like coerced him into like it was. And it was kind of a deal where they were trying to catch some bigger fish, some of the, like, um, who was it, like Aryans Nation people yeah, yeah. That, that were also out there in that part of the country. <clears throat> and, like, he had kind of, like, he was not a part of them at all. They made that very clear in the book. But he was kind of a misfit, and it kind of, well, kind of like your buddy, it sounded like it where it was like, hey, you need to hang out. <laughs> like, they kind of tried to get him involved, and he was like, no, 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 they were – they were very devout Christians. Let's use like, the term buddy loosely here. I don't need somebody <laughs> showing up questioning me. <laughs> yeah. A former coworker. Yes. But anyway, yeah. Sorry. That, that's our that's our anti government. That's your ag talk on talk dirt to me for uh you know, our anti government <laughs> ranting. But yeah. we if you understand anything about farmers, it's that we hate taxes and most of us hate the government. Like that's a pretty yeah. Most and we're the non-hypocritical ones that fully admit that, yeah, and all the stupid payments we get. We don't want like just know, stop. We're fine them. cutting that out too. Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. We, we don't want we don't want to not pay taxes, but then get all the the farm and welfare. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We want nothing. I want the government completely out of the picture. Yeah. We want them out of our lives. Yeah. We're breaking up with you, government. Yeah. We're done with this. Um. Well. Uh, yes. Speaking of government, kind of try to segue into hold on wait now i gotta oh, okay okay now this is uh is this government specific i mean i was going to kind of tie it into one of the the current news stories all right well but, before we get into news right. well i got another news we got to address the elephant in the room about yellowstone um have you seen the the crap going down on yellowstone no um, i really don't i mean the, the kevin coster's leaving the show well, I thought I saw something where they were saying like Matthew McConaughey may step in. So they've talked about that, but it's pretty well been confirmed that Costner is out after, um, after this season. They're having a hard time getting him to come film the last. It's because they haven't finished filming the second half of yeah. whatever we're in the big. He's uh, well, apparently why. well, apparently he's a dick. Um, like I was kind of like bummed to hear it cause I'm like, man, I like old Costner, but well, I knew he was, he was kind of a liberal, like he, he oh, yeah. which I mean, hell that's name an actor that didn't, I mean, yeah. you have a hard, it's a pretty short list, but, uh, um, yeah, it, it, cause I always thought that cause this show is obviously super popular in their core audience. Not that it's a super political show, but I guarantee you, if you polled the, the the big conservative fans. yeah the, the the fans are pretty conservative yeah um, well he's he has they said he's been very egotistical for the majority of the show to the point where it's like clashed with some of the the co uh co-stars and um but like apparently the he had agreed to film like 65 days a year and then i think he cut it back to 50 and then he showed up this last time and said he would film for a week. And they were like, we can't do this in a week. We got to have you more than that. And he's like, no, nah, it's got to be a week. And so, and then his longtime assistant, it said, made some, I've not watched Tulsa King. Have you watched that? No. Well, apparently Taylor Sheridan also writes that. That dude must, his brain must be like in, about to explode. But um, he writes Tulsa King and that guy that's like, Kevin Costner's right hand man put up a tweet and was like, This show is absolute shit. And the writing is shit. And he was like, Sheridan, you need he was like, You need to stick to Westerns, farm boy, or something. Country boy. He was like, Country boy, you need to stick to Westerns because you don't know shit about this life. He said, I'm embarrassed for you. Like uh like yeah. blasted Taylor Sheridan on there, which then he ended up deleting the tweet very rapidly. 
but not before like it had been sent to Sheridan. And so like yeah, people screenshotted it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it like blew up and that caused more of a ruckus. And I talked to a, a, I talked to a person that's kind of in the know with Yellowstone. And I was like, what's the deal with Costner? And he was like, man, I think he's been checked out on the show for a while. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure he doesn't need the money, but man, like this is, that's huge, man. And this thing and, and kind of a douche thing. Like, all right, Let's say... Well, I mean, he had some really big hits 20 years ago, but he really hadn't done much. Like, yeah. I don't even know what... He said small were. parts. Like, he was in Man of Steel, like the Superman movie. Smaller parts. You know, he gets killed uh, in it. But, like... Um, but, like, this is... I mean, I feel like... I mean, not that he's about to die, but it's, it's potentially be one of the last things people really remember him by. Oh, yeah. You know? Well, that's what and I'm saying. I, it's kind of douchey. As and, a and star. He's, and he's a super, like, his character's a little bit controversial, but I would say fans of the show like his character. He's yeah. not like, it's not like, you know, some of the other characters in the show where you're like, yeah, I don't know about them. Yeah. You like them one episode, not the next. Like, no, everybody. Like Rip. You hate him? No, no, like Monica. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I don't know how iffy people are on Monica. I think most yeah. people just hate her. No, yeah. Right. Well, or even like she, Beth, like, yeah. I think most people probably like Beth that like the show, but like, yeah, she could like, she does get more attractive to me as the show goes. I think the scar, she got better looking with the scar. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, her, um, the, the attitude's fine. Like, I'm fine with like a boss woman or whatever, but I don't know. Still something about me, like a woman that has a mouth like that. I'm just like, <laughs> Oh, it's not, that's not attractive. Like, yeah. like, like I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and say my wife doesn't cuss, but like, good lord, like, yeah, not, yeah, not on that level. If Marcy talked like that, that would definitely, I don't know, that would be a little, little bizarre. I guess to it's me. just the southern part of me, but I mean, I, I expect a, a, a lady, a, a, a lady to to talk and act like a lady, at yeah. least when she should, you yeah. Know I mean? um, when shouldn't she? Well, I'm just saying, like. <laughs> <laughs> like like Beth Beth and that's why people love her. She she does she all does the time. Not give a damn. Yeah, there are zero f's given by yeah. her. She doesn't care where she is in public or wherever else. Well, she would be exhausting. Like she would be a. I, I wouldn't want to deal with her. Yeah. Um. But no. Yeah. Apparently, it sounds like Costner's going to be out. So Yellowstone might be coming to an end. But it's been, well, I I have enjoyed 1883 and now 1923 probably more than I have even you know the the current day but 1923 i have for sure because i i wonder how long they were planning on yellowstone going i mean obviously if it's making money you know the i'm sure paramount's going to keep yeah re up in it but um i wonder how long you know taylor like how long does he really have in mind for it to keep you know being i don't know out, but because you know he's got another one coming out what is it 1943 or something yeah i'm sure they're going to keep doing you know that you know that that's i figured they'd have at least one more and maybe two more to get them up to present day yeah you know yeah maybe do like a 19 1940 1950 version and then like a 1980 yeah know. that'd be funny yeah 80 <laughs> all right what you got you got some so some ag topics speaking of the government it's kind of a, a topic we i think it was probably right at a year ago i'd have to go back and look um do you see the old um the gunships going after the cattle is 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 about to go down again. The feral cows. Yeah, the, the same same deal out there in New Mexico. The tactical cowboys. Yeah, tactical cowboys. Thanks, what you titled that one. But uh, out there in the the Gila or Gila, G I L A National Forest in New Mexico. But, Why are they just back out there again? Well, there's just. I mean, of course, they didn't kill them all, and and they're just. And and I can kind of see both sides. Um, you know they're they're hard on the environment. You know I think it's yeah they're a lot farts of and burps. <laughs> Actually, not so much that it's just like <laughs> and some of the streams and stuff. Which I mean we know this everywhere where we have cows that have access to a creek. You know where they walk up yeah. and down out of it. I mean they they create very real paths. But um, actually the what the first thing I saw that it was back in the news and I wasn't even sure if it was he was referencing a just the old stories or new ones, but it was your buddy Robbie with uh blood origins. Oh, really? And, and I didn't even, cause I was, I was somewhere. I didn't really have time, but I just, and he was talking about it, but I didn't get really listen to his cause it, I just saw it and I immediately searched. Um, but yeah, there, it's art. There's articles everywhere in the New York times huh. and whatnot. It's, it's all pretty much the same thing, but 
yeah they uh so they're waco and the cows yeah i, th- and I think the big deal because a lot of people are like well, look we got starving people you know new mexico has a you know a, i don't know a lot of you know homeless hungry people like they should but i think they're in it's such a remote area like rounding them up if, if they could have been rounded up they wouldn't be there to begin with you yeah know? and so can you like a feral cow like that if you can catch them can you just get them um yeah could you like claim them yeah i think that might be true um, yeah. if they're unbranded um you know they wouldn't be worth a whole lot you know just because i mean obviously they would they're not much of a bloodline well, or anything. and you wouldn't want to do it i mean you would just probably want to immediately take them to be slaughtered or processed because they, they wouldn't do well like in a feed lot or anything. be so wild yeah and 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 they've just been eating brush out there. So it's, I mean, it wouldn't be a premium product, but. Is it a lot for, of sage, like, sage like, brush? Would it be I sagey even, meat? You know, that's what people say about like the mule deer. Um, and like, I mean, I just, I'm going to eat a mule deer several times a week right now. And I, but, but folks out there like in Montana, they don't, they, they love to eat their white tail, but not the mule deer because what, the, what the difference diet. So maybe, but yeah, you know, as far as just some, some, just grind them up and give them to the food bank and they can yeah put it in tacos and chili you know to feed you know underprivileged people yeah um, it'd be fine but yeah i think getting to them and getting them out of there which you know a lot of the ranchers in the area are worried that because they're just they're shooting them and then i think they're making sure like if they fall dead in the stream they get them out of the streams and stuff so they don't contaminate but um you know, they have wolves and mountain lions and stuff out there. Like, well, now maybe bears too. Gonna draw them down. Well, or they'll, um, then those animals are gonna get a taste for beef and then they may, you know, start preying on. See how tasty it is. Yeah. And, and of course, there was some studies like, ah, there's nothing to prove that they actually do that. But I don't know. Um, it's like the whole like man eating tiger thing. Once they get a taste of, <laughs> of, of human flesh, they'll, they'll keep eating them. But, uh, if yes, I had eaten, sage grass or something all my life and then i got a taste of beef yeah i'd be after them those, cows. those wolves are eating some kind of meat but um if i'd eaten rotten fish or something all my yeah. life i'd be after some cows so but it, it's all there's not a whole lot new to the story except they're doing that again um, i don't know why the mexico stock growers association of course some of those groups are trying to fight it and yeah um, there needs to be a movie about that but it needs to be like I think we've talked about this kind of like it needs to be like Fast and the Furious, but the cowboy version. And I can see it like I can picture it in my head like they're flying in in helicopters, and they're like gonna they're like hoarding in the cattle and herding them around with helicopters. And you got like dudes like jumping out of the helicopters like parachuting down onto the cattle. Well, you know I've watched they can brand them. Some of those videos where they you know like capture wild buffalo and stuff, and a lot of times they're they're herding them with using a helicopter yeah you know and funnel them down into somewhere where they can catch them but uh like the video did i send you the video of uh the dudes we've talked about the ranch i think we talked about it on here or it was on one of the shows of the dudes that are driving they got the arms attached onto the the cars have you seen that? oh yeah 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 i have seen some of those videos dude that's that's the kind of stuff needs to be in the movie i and like that you know, that would be something that could work, but I'm pretty sure where these cattle are, like there ain't no, you would go to drive getting in there with vehicles or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but yes, the other story, this also involves cattle is that there has been a, another case of BSE or mad cow in Brazil. Mm. And so they are now have had their, exports to china have been halted um, because china's real sensitive on that china's a china's by far their biggest importer of brazilian beef is they gonna Um, pump our numbers up well like you would think it could potentially help us because yeah because you would think china's gonna need to get that beef somewhere Mm -hmm. um one of the articles i read actually because i think a few years ago same thing happened and it took them several months before they would start allowing Brazilian beef to be imported again. Yeah. They figure it, it, yeah, it was happened in 21. They figure the ban on the imports may not last as long this time around because one, 
global beef supplies are tight right now, tongue tied. Um, and so, yeah, just them being able to get a hold of it and to obviously China's, you know, kind of things with a, between us and them are always kind of precarious. So they don't want to, yeah, I was gonna say China's probably, they, they, they don't want to help us out a whole lot. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, just, you know, and we import a fair amount of beef from, from South America too, mainly, you know, lower end cuts that, you know, really lean that we grind with our higher fat to make ground products, which is fine until they then label it as a product of the USA, which that piss you off and this whole nother topic. But, um, yeah, it, it just does kind of highlight some of the concerns because again, our, one of the biggest problems in the beef industry, in my opinion, right now, and or beef cattle is the packer concentration. We only have four meat packers that yep. control 85%. It's a monopoly. One of them being JBS is Brazilian. Yeah. Um, another one being national beef is majority Brazilian owned. And so, I mean, obviously that that's one of the big reasons why we import so much beef from there, which they're just the largest beef exporter in the world anyway. Um, so, yeah. And, and I mean, I'm not worried about catching mad cow, um, mainly because I know where my beef comes from <laughs> <laughs> and it's not Brazil, but, um, you know, I don't think there's a huge risk of that it was one cow, you know, but yeah, it goes back to, I don't know. Um, and, and, and us, you know, having trade partners is important. You know, it adds value, um, to some of our other cuts of meat. So I'm not telling us, you know, one of these people that's so narrow minded on, it's like, we shouldn't import any beef. We grow plenty for ourselves. Well, but you got to look at it. The our trade partners, we export a lot of stuff that we don't want to eat, you yeah. know, and we are not going to eat in this country just because we don't. You know, Oregon, you know, meats a lot of stuff that we consider byproducts that adds a lot of value to our animals, and so um, yeah, we need those trade partners that take that stuff off our hands and give us a little money for it. Yeah, uh, you know, if in, in return we bring in some some of theirs, um, you know, to blend with our you know, higher fat stuff. Hey, fine, but it needs to be truth and labeling. So I thought that was a story that I, that must have just come out today. I think it was kind of breaking news in terms of the ban on the exports to China, but not, um, I think it was a few days ago. They, they actually had the confirmed case. Yeah. So, yeah. Huh. Case of mad cow in Brazil. Well, Maybe maybe we'll see an uptick in our markets on that. Uh, wishing bad on them, but that's usually – see, we're in the same boat on the row crop side. We watch heavily what happens kind of in the South America side to see – man, it always plays a big, big deal on our markets. I mean, it's like tomorrow well, night. They're, I think they've had some crazy weather down there. Well, they had yeah. like a terrible frost that, that – because I guess they're in the middle of summer right now. Yeah they're getting ready to go into fall, but some areas had like a very unusual frost, you know, much earlier than they would normally get at this time of year. And yeah, had potential to damage a bunch of soybeans. Yeah. I, I saw pictures of soybeans. <clears throat> there is something weird. Yeah. Going on there and see, that's like tomorrow night, you know, the farm and gin shows in Memphis this weekend. Yeah, I was, I meant to ask earlier if you were planning on going, I will be there. Yeah. Um, I'll be there Friday, uh, Friday, uh, probably in the morning. If we got some listeners that are going to be there, if you see me walking around, come up and say, hey, yeah, I'm, I'll gladly talk to you. But, uh, yeah, I'll be there Friday. And tomorrow night, they got a marketing meeting, Cargill. They've invited us to come out, and uh, they'll have some big wigs from, like, Minnesota or somewhere come down and kind of tell us what, what is going on uh, with the markets. And uh, Dad and I may go. Uh, again, yeah, it's in Memphis. We we'll have to decide if we want to go. They will feed us. It's like unlimited whiskey and beer. One thing about yeah. it, if you ever wondered, like farmers, you know, I'm I'm a pretty controlled drinker. Like I have my drink here, but a lot of farmers like to get absolutely shit faced. So <laughs> there will be a, any amount of alcohol imaginable. Oh, and they'll yeah, try to get yeah, us to most of them. When my wife worked more in the in the ag industry her company had it one of those big deals at open bar and yeah he was he was a it was a recipe for disaster yeah <laughs> there's never a shortage oh i mean and that it never fails like we'll go does, tomorrow does feed you good? yeah oh and dude like 
this weekend, these are the weekends like like I'm royalty. Like uh, I'm going in there this time. Like tomorrow night, if we go, they'll be like, "Man, let us get you a hotel room. We'll put you all up for the night. You can stay tonight. Hell, we'll back. We'll get you a hotel room tomorrow night. You know, you can get you and the kids stay and wife, all of them. Like they'll they'll try to put you up all weekend. I mean, if you wanted to stay, yeah, you could. And you're a farmer that does business with them. They will gladly put you in a hotel room. Yeah. Um. But uh, I mean, hell, man, we we may go tomorrow night, but I am going to go Friday. Uh, yeah. To the show. So yeah, like I said, if y'all see me walking around, uh, I'd love for you to come up and say something. Uh, chat chat with me about it uh, while we're there. I'll be there with my wife and my kiddos. So be there on for yeah Friday. Probably plan to get there probably around ten o'clock or so. Well, good deal. Yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking. I might take my son down there on Saturday, but it'll be dependent on a lot of other things getting canceled <laughs> for yeah. me to be able to do it. But uh, yeah, I was like, oh, I'd like to go at some point. But man, I try to go every year. We, I have actually never been to the farm show. Really? Like, you know, my wife worked down there. I went to like their companies, you know, dinner yeah. and kind of party and whatnot. But. I've never actually been to the show. You just so. went for the shit face and part of things. Well, they, she was down there, you know, of course, like all weekend. And, yeah. And they had that. And I think most of them, you know, spouse would not say, yeah, I went down there. And, and she was in a hotel herself. So, yeah, we, I ain't got to drive home. And <laughs> most people, I, I, I'm pretty introverted. And so, like, especially around a, like a large crowd, crowd of people that, like, I didn't know, you know, five people there you know yeah. a few few other my buddies that went out the farm came by but uh i was like yeah just sit here by the bar yeah and uh yeah that's probably you know that's something funny both of us are are pretty big talkers i mean most people listening would figure that out but like i'm the same way i really don't enjoy like large crowds i would consider well, myself an introvert but again like if somebody sees me like i, I love chatting wait, with people wait. Like when I'm in a place like that and I don't know anybody there, like I'm not going to be just the guy like, "Hey man, you know, how's it going?" Yeah. yeah, I'm just like the, the, the car salesman kind of, you know, can yeah. you know, talk to anybody. Um, now I get to talking to people and I'm like, "Oh yeah," and get to know them. But anyway, yeah, I can disappear when it's like a large crowd. I'll just like vanish. I'm like, yeah. let me just disappear like a ghost. Yeah. Um, trying to think too on the we got the company. No, you get our thing, but we you. Start off with two words. Made in America. Oh man, do you got one tonight? Um, I keep a running list, so. Cause I was trying to think of one, but I I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank. So um, yeah, I can do one. Something I use pretty much every day. Um, Golden Stag work gloves. I'm trying to remember where I picked up the pair that I've got right now. Golden Stag. I've never Pro heard of that. Probably. I mean, it's just, you would, just because you probably don't look at the brand name of the leather gloves when you buy them very often, do you? Um, <laughs> no. Because I'm the same way, but, you know, and a lot of them, you know, are made in China or wherever. Um, so are they deer skin? These, the ones I have might be they they're relatively soft, but they're they're thicker than some of the deer skin. Cause some of the deer skin gloves like they're they're nice, they're soft, but like I'm gonna wear a hole in them in like a week. Yeah, like, like they just they ain't gonna last. This pair I've actually had for a couple of months, um, and they're one of two pairs of leather gloves that I wear. I've got hmm. I've got another pair, brand, and I'm not sure where they're made, so I'm not gonna mention them. Uh, but both super comfortable, very durable. But yeah, Golden Stag. Pretty sure I picked them up at Stockdale's the more I sit here and think about it. Well, I got to go by there tomorrow, pick up some feed. So I'll. Yeah, and these are just plain leather gloves. Like, there's yeah. nothing, nothing super fancy about them, but they're, they're very comfortable. They're thicker. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I would go straight out to stretching barbed wire in them just because I like them so much. Yeah. But I, I don't know that they wouldn't, you know, they, they may very well hold up to that. Yeah. Yeah, just. Feeding, check doing chores, working on equipment, things like that. Yeah. Um, and it's made in America. Yeah, I'll check that out. Yes, they, and they, they are like, I think even the tag, you know, it's got a big American flag. Like, they, they make it well known. Did you, uh, have you ever used sheepskin gloves? I don't know that I've ever had sheepskin ones. I know I've had deer and like the goat. and There was some, I think it was, uh, I can't remember the name of the glove, but 
uh, a buddy of dad's brought us some, and I'm pretty sure they were sheepskin. It was really thin, but it was really tough. And we liked them because you could still, like, you could feel, like, you know, if you had to tighten up, a, put a bolt and nut on, you could feel them. Yeah. But they were, they were like, really durable. That was, like, that's probably been dad's favorite pair of gloves he's had, and those were really good. I'm thinking they were sheepskin, but... You got me intrigued on the golden stag. I'll I'll, I'll try to pick up a pair. I, I'm a I'm a leather like work glove like aficionado. Like I have a problem. Like a lot of times when I go to like the farm store, if I walk behind like the rack, like I just grab. Like I have got. If I need a pair of leather gloves, I can find one just anywhere in, in my Jeep. I've probably got two or three. You know, some of them are old and probably need to be thrown away. Farm truck on the tractor <laughs> on the side by side. Like, well, it's not a bad thing in, to have. In in most of my jackets, you reach in the pocket like, oh, there's another pair of gloves. Yeah. So, um, but uh, so I've I've had a lot of different. And sometimes you know I buy just a cheap pair. It's like, oh heck, those are only fifteen bucks. Which for a pair of leather gloves, that's pretty. And yeah, like I, first time you shove your hand in them real hard, the stitching rips, and you're like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, that or the thumb is really long. Uh, a lot of times, the cheaper ones, the thumb will be well, or really they're just long. inconsistent, or like yeah. the pinky is too damn short. Like, I, yeah. it doesn't even, yeah, yeah. Well, Golden Stag, I'll check that out. Well, well, all right, guys. Uh, hey, if you tuned in, leave us a rating and a review. Again, man, I, I always say this we, we, this show is steadily growing. I will, hey, I shout out to the listeners man the show is growing really well and we have been at like 39 ratings on apple Podcasts. i mean and maybe we maybe all of you the other people are listening on like spotify stitcher google podcast i realize there's more apps out there than apple Podcasts, but with the numbers we're getting i just think we got more than 39 listeners on apple podcast take 30 seconds and leave us a review yes Please leave us a review. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the little bell to notify you when we drop a new episode, and your life will be better. You'll be better yeah. for it. Yeah. So appreciate it, guys. It, you got to trust the science there. It will be better. That's right. 60% of the time, every time, it will That's be right. better. That's right. <laughs> Take care. Talk to y'all next week.